What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris Drake, up in the building, and I'm joined today by Mr. David Wise. Dave, we are turning up on a Tuesday. Let people know what we're talking about today. Drake, we're playing a fun game today of go through our schedule, and who has the better quarterback? Jordan Travis versus the world. And from yesterday, we're carrying over a very important, solemn topic, which is the eulogy of Florida State's men's basketball team. Rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace to the 2022 FSU basketball season. But, folks, we are here to have a good time. As always, thank you so much for making Locked On Sentinels your first listen each and every day. And with that being said, let's go on with the show. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team... Every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. As I said before, it's your boy Drake, and I'm joined with Mr. David Wise. Before we discuss Jordan Travis versus the world, I kind of like that, by the way, Dave, the way you made that moniker up on the spot. What's up, my guy? What's going on, beautiful? Oh, just loving life, Drake. Ready for a <laughs> ready for a sports season and for. One of the FSU sports. We are a soccer school, which is cool. Keep winning, girls. Love it. And love it. And also, shout out to the women's softball team. I know they have three players in the top 100 preseason rankings. And also, top, they have two play. I think, two two freshmen in the top 50 right now also, I think, also. Yeah. So, I'm actually super stoked about that. But, folks, we are here to discuss Jordan Travis versus the world. Because there's we kind of now are the opinion that until we get a transfer QB... We're not going to get one. We're probably not going to get one until May. As we said before, the transfer trans portal is not officially shut until the NCAA wants to do something about that. So we're here to discuss George Travis versus the world. Now, Dave, you came up with this exercise. How do you want to approach this? So here's what I want to do. I want to go one by one through our schedule okay. and just decide amongst the most important position on the field, the quarterback in this sport, who has the better quarterback? Who are we feeling is better set at the most important position? Let's do it. Okay. Let's start with game number one. That is April 9th, the spring game. Garnet and Gold spring game. It'll be Jordan Travis versus either A.J. Duffy or Tate Rod. I'm joking, folks. Let's yeah. go with game number one with Duquesne or David Duquesne, as now it's right. trademarked by Block on Symbols here. It's not trademarked, folks. We're yes. just joking. Uh, we don't know what the QB is for that, but it's also an FCS school. I know everyone is still shell-shocked from Jacksonville State. I would really, really Jackson. doubt that we're going to have a um, – uh, and that too. <laughs> I really, really doubt we're going to have a repeat performance from that, so I'll count that as a W. Wait, LSU didn't Sanford's quarterback throw for like 590 yards against us. Yeah, Devlin Hodges, aka Duck, oh. yeah, Duck Hodges. Yeah, we're not discussing. We're not. We're not doing that right now. Um, because I don't know who David Duquesne is. Yeah. Because I, he's an actor in Californication. Uh, for LSU though, September fourth. Who is that quarterback? Who, Do we know? Do they know? So Max Johnson transferred out, right? Yeah. And I think the quarterback actually is Miles Brennan, who's someone that I think all a few outlets were like saying actually entered the portal. And then Brian Kelly convinced him to stay. But they also signed, I think, Walker Howard, who's a freshman QB. So it's going to be one of those two. So I want to get your thoughts on basically who's going to be – basically, is, does Jordan Travis have the advantage here? Or do you think Brian Kelly, who is known for getting the most of his QBs, look at Jack Cohn last year, can actually have the edge? Well, here's what I think. I think the most likely outcome is that Brian Kelly uh, emotionally traumatizes his quarterback by grinding up on him. And <laughs> I don't know how you come back from that. So I just imagine Jordan Travis will have more focus going into that game. Yeah, those videos are weird, man. There's no way to put it about it. Um, In my personal opinion, I do think Jordan Travis has the edge here, primarily because, one, they are going to have a new offensive scheme. Yep. Two, I know the AC schedule drops on, I think, to, I think today, actually. I are recording this on Sunday morning. So it's going to be September 4th. And with the new offensive scheme, it takes a little longer to develop. And LSU, I think, is going to be the second game. Miles Brennan, I mean, he's a good QB. Here's the problem, though. He has the same problem as Jordan Travis. He gets hurt a lot. And if he gets hurt, whether it be spring, whether it be during this game, we're gonna you're going to put a Walker Howard there as his backup. Mm. They kind of have a similar situation as we do where their backup is a true freshman. So to me, I'm going to give Jordan Travis the edge here, primarily because I think with his legs and with his arm, he's able to keep the defense guessing. And I liked what we saw at the end of the defense. I know that Adam Fuller has been demoted to co-DC Ray Shannon. In my personal opinion, I think it actually might help him out a lot more. So 
I'll give Jordan Travis one, world zero. Next yeah. one that we have on here is the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. I'll give that a W as well because yeah, that, that's got to be Jordan Travis. That can't not be Jordan Travis or there's a problem. Yeah, they lost a lot of their players and also, I mean, like it's they lost their coach too. Now, right. Florida, now I'm doing this down the road, but yeah. I'll, I'll do Florida last because that's the end of the year. We know it's going to be November. Boston College. Interesting. Phil it is interesting. Yeah, because Phil Dracovic does come back, and not only does he come back, Zay Flowers comes back. So I kind of want your thoughts on that one. I didn't Phil Dracovic have like a weird rushing game against us. Like, I, I don't know. He's he's a better thrower of the football, I think, than Jordan Travis. Um, he's just big, I, too. He's like, he big, he's like big. big Ben. He's going to take down. Taking out like the injury risk of it, I think I like Jordan Travis better. Um, I think I'd rather have him as my quarterback than Phil Dracovic because he's more dynamic to me. I don't think Phil Dracovic is ever going to repeat a rushing performance like I think he did against us, didn't he? I think so too. And I, I like. I mean, my personal opinion because we got to go through these like really quickly. Yeah. Um, with Phil Dracovic, I like him as the better QB prospect, but I give the edge Jordan Travis here before. Yeah. Mainly because he's already beaten that team twice. Yep. We saw the big, big run, I think, two years ago when uh, I think it was Coach Odell's first game for bowl eligibility. He ran, it was like, what, two separate touchdowns yeah. for like 60 yards and 30 yeah. yards. Yeah. And then last year, he's the main reason why he won the game too as well. And he's already beat up on a pretty decent Boston College team. So I'm going to give Jordan Travis the dub here. So Jordan Travis, you know, two, world zero. Now Clemson. You want to go first? or I, I Yeah, I can go first with this one. I actually think that this is the one where he gets his first L. I do think DJ Uyunglele is a really damn good QB. Typically speaking, Clemson, you know, wide receiver wise, has a T. Higgins or a Justin Ross. The only kid I can think of at the top of my head for Clemson that they have was Aju Aju was wide out, and I think he's in the transport right now. Frank Ladson also just left. But me personally, I think DJ has the better arm. He can move, he actually can run. The thing is, though, when they ask him to, he doesn't want to. So that kind of comes down to where. The two separate. So for my personal opinion, from my money, I'll take DJ over JT. No, I was DJ's biggest stand last year. I was dead wrong. He is not the guy. He's not a five star. He's not the next Clemson quarterback. He has the Jamarcus Russell arm in every way, shape and form. He just doesn't. His brain tells him to throw it here and his body just doesn't throw it there. It just doesn't work out. His accuracy is awful. Like you said, he can run, but he chooses not to. And at times where it would make a lot of sense to. And for that reason, I'm going to take Jordan Travis over DJ. Okay. So for you, that's three Jordan world zero for me. It's two and one. And let's move on to Georgia Tech before we go to our break. Yep. For Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Now, there's a <laughs> lot them. of roster influx coming out, but it's really funny that it's going to be Jeff Sims, you know, for another year, so to yep. speak. He's a damn good QB, good, you know, good throw of the football, great legs. To me, this one is basically Jordan Travis for me because I think that Jeff Sims is basically where Jordan Travis was two years ago. Yeah, that's right. Where he's not fully developed yet. He still has the, um, the pocket presence issues. His footwork is not the greatest, but he has the arm talent and also – his legs, though, are super dynamite. But Jordan Travis is now a much more mature, much more evolved, much better, you know, more developed QB. So Jordan Travis, to me, is this is definitely an easy W for him. Yep, nothing to add. Nothing to add to that? Nope. No smart comments? Nope. Are you okay? Yep. Damn. Well, Dave, let me tell you about our friends over at BetOnline that hopefully gets you back into the, the swing of things. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bend all the latest sports action whether it be nhl nba mlb's just around the corner if the lockout ends let's pray for that because i need marlins baseball more than life itself right now by heading over to bellline.ag use promo code locked on that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n when you sign up today and you will get a 50 percent a five zero percent welcome bonus on your first deposit and folks we got ufc 271 coming up israel adesanya robert whitaker for my money, take Robert Whitaker on the money line. Maybe take a third round knockout because I think Izzy is definitely not for the count. But folks, Bell Line is where the game starts by using promo code locked on L O C K E D O N. So now, Dave, let's round out the rest of the schedule and then we'll discuss basketball towards the end, right? Yep. All right. The next one we got is the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And before you start with this one, I know your, your affinity for Wake Forest knows no bounds. They're your second team probably, you know, out there right now. God, Sam Hartman, Sam Hartman does come back. Yeah. 
Sam Hartman, also the A.C. Most, Perry comes back. The most overrated quarterback in the ACC. Yeah, he's coming back. Okay, I'm going to ask you then. You go first then with this one. I think yep. you're wrong, but yep. I'm please. I'm very happy to. Yeah, please enlighten the audience why you wrongfully think that Sam Hartman is the <laughs> most overrated quarterback in the ACC. But right. Like, yeah, yeah. So Sam Hartman is just Riley Skinner's uh, doppelganger. Um, Riley Skinner is actually still the quarterback of Wake Forest. He's never going to leave. He's just reincarnated himself. I guess he uh, found him some Buddhism. But no, I, they had an, they had a cute little year last year. It Really, it was adorable. Um, he didn't show up when they needed him in their game against Pitt, right? Uh, did he win that game, Drake? No? No. No, he didn't. Um, and he he doesn't have nearly, nearly the rushing capability. He doesn't have any rushing capability. God, he's just awful. Jordan Travis... I trust more to make a play when it's needed. Uh, there is no question that Jordan Travis is the worst between the two uh, throwing the football, but his legs are so much better, so much better that all he would need to do is make a small improvement in his passing abilities this year. And I would rather have him as my quarterback. And this is coming from a guy last year who didn't want Jordan Travis starting. Yeah, you're wrong about this one. Uh, no. Sam Hartman actually is a very damn good QB. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot with the pick game, you're kind of forgetting the defense was bad. Also, they're going up against Kenny Pickett, who was the I think the runner up or the third place finisher for the Heisman this year. But with Sam Hartman, he's got the better arm. Sam Hartman actually does have several rushing TDs. He can extend the play. He's not the same runner as Jordan Travis. I don't think anybody is. That's if anyone tells you differently, that's wrong. I don't care who you are. But Sam Hartman is the better QB. In my personal opinion, this one to me is definitely just more. I will lean for Sam Harmon for this one. We just saw like how he decimated our defense. He's very, very accurate, very good at that. He is prone to mistakes, but Jordan Travis is also prone to a lot of those same mistakes as well. So for me, I will go with Sam Harmon. All right. So the next one we're going to go to is someone that you're a big fan of. I'll start yeah. first because I want you to kind of end off on that one. Is Molly Cunningham. Yeah. Now it's really funny that we, I think last year and the year and then the first year with Knowles Anonymous, that we compare Jordan Travis to Lamar Jackson, right? Someone that's very dynamic with his legs, has the arm capability, but his real highlight plays are him moving out the pocket, making people miss with his movement. So, but Malik, Malik Cunningham, I, in my, in my opinion, like two years ago, I thought he was bad. I thought that he was not a good thrower of the football, but the power that he's improved each and every year over the past two seasons and, He's going to be coming in this year as a dark horse Heisman candidate. Yep. The kid's big. The kid can move. And he's not making the same dumb mistakes that he was, he's prone to making. There used to be the saying where, are you either going to get the good Malik Cunningham or the bad Malik Cunningham? And we're now at the point now that you only get the good Malik Cunningham. And he's probably the only reason why Scott Satterfield hasn't been fired yet. So I'm not going to say any more on that. I mean, you know where I stand on that one. Dave, you kind of, you are... You're the one that, you know, introduced me to how, actually how good he was. So I kind of yeah. want you to take the ball right now for this one. Malik Cunningham, like it's – he's good in the traditional passing categories or the tr just the traditional quarterback metrics. But if you go deeper than that, he's also one of the more clutch quarterbacks in the country. Um, and for whatever reason, he just seems to own Florida State. Like he's he's good in general, but when he plays against us, he takes it up to another level. He is, I think, Jordan Travis's ceiling. Um, and until Jordan Travis makes a massive leap with his arm, uh, I'm going to take Malik Cunningham eight days a week. So yeah, I'm at two and four and you're at five and one basically for the Jordan Travis, like the debate right now, which kind of right now is basically the, the, we're asking ourselves right now is Jordan Travis a top five QB in the conference, but now we're getting to the point now is Jordan Travis a top five QB in his own division. And folks, the purpose of this exercise is kind of to show you how difficult this conference division next year is really going to be. So maybe yeah. to kind of temper expectations a little bit to see how hard of a task he has moving forward. Now let's go down to the University of Coral Gables, where as of this recording, they still don't have neither an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator. Shout out, Mark Cristobal. You're running a great ship down there. So with Miami, it's TVD. It's Tyler Van Dyke. You go first in this one. We have very different opinions on this. I think yeah. anybody that's listened to us talk about Tyler Van Dyke knows how I feel about him and how Drake feels about him. I don't think he's a very good quarterback. I think he was the most overrated quarterback in the entire ACC last year. Um, I think he's a mouthy little fella. 
And I think that's going to get him into trouble. I think he thinks he's better than he actually is. And I can't wait to see him make some more of those throws where he overestimates his ability. He's not nearly the runner Jordan Travis is. He probably has a stronger arm than Jordan Travis. However, uh, like I said, I think the problem's more between the ears in terms of what he thinks he can do versus what he can actually do. And I think you're going to see that materialize this year. It's really funny calling him a math little fella, and you were probably 400 shorter than me, and he's like 400 taller than me. But I'm going to agree with you here, and it's not for the reasons why you said that. I think TVD is actually a very good QB. Here's my problem. Whenever you see a freshman QB or a retro freshman QB come in middle of the year, what's the problem? There's no tape on the kid, how he develops or how he plays, right? Yeah. We, say the, we see the same thing in baseball. We, you promote a pitcher. The pitcher comes up, has a great first start, right? But then after a few starts, he start, he can start getting shelled because there's tape on them. You see the tendencies and all that. You, know, you adjust their timing. So I'm going to say that Jordan Travis is the better QB primarily because there are going to be some ex- exploits next season with TVD because now there's film on him. And I think, and also we already have the head to head right, head right now with JT1, TVD0. Mm-hmm. And in my personal opinion, the only reason why we were left them in that game was we got a little more conservative. We pulled off the gas a little bit, and we didn't let JT be JT. Yep. So in my personal opinion, this is probably an easier dub for JT. So right now it's JT3-4. You have him at 6-1. And let's do these last two, you know, right off the bat. You know, go, yeah, uh, we don't need to talk about these two, right? NC State and Syracuse. Like, Yeah, Syracuse is the dub, and NC State, I think it's Devin Larry. Um, yeah. Devin Larry just, I think he's really good, so I'll give him I'll give him that one, but you'll, I know Will he you? won't. Yeah, I like Devin Larry. And oh, so basically... God. Yeah, we're, we won't. We won't. Too, you want to do deep in that one real quick before we go to Florida? He's he's just so unimpressive to me. Like he's your classic like ACC quarterback that like he's okay. He's gonna get drafted in the sixth round, and he'll be working at you know probably corporate at Sears pretty soon. Y'all, Dave, always looking for the silver lining in all of his insults. But let us end off with Florida. It's the big one. It is the big one because as like like we said last year, we have no idea who the starting quarterback is. Amory Jones entered the portal. He came, but then back. he took. He came out, right? Yep, he came back. So he's in the a- mix. Yeah, AR fifteen. Anthony he's Richardson. In the mix. He's in the mix too. And then they add Jack Miller, who was the QB at Ohio State that transferred in. Yeah. So you have three options there, and I think they have another kid too. I think his name is. His last, I know his last name is Del Rio. He's a QB too. I think he was a freshman last Jack year. Jack Del Rio's kid, like the Jack's old coach. No, 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 different Del Rio. No, no relation. Um. So. I'm going to let you go with this one first and I'll end us off on that because of the break. What do you think of this one? Well, so when Emory Jones entered the transfer portal, I was upset as most Florida State fans should have been because Emory Jones, uh, despite being the having the seniority in the room, he's not a good quarterback. He he actively hurts Florida's chances to win. Uh, we We talked last year how before we were about to play them, how we did not want it to be Anthony Richardson starting that game. Because yeah. Anthony Richardson is far more dynamic. He is. He's Cam Newton. He is Cam Newton with his legs at least. Um, and he is the better quarterback between the two, I think. However, uh, with Emory Jones coming back, I, if it's between Jordan Travis and Emory Jones, that's not even difficult to me. If it's between Jordan Travis and Anthony Richardson, because I don't know anything about the Ohio State kid, but if it's between JT and Anthony Richardson, I'll say this. I would right now choose Jordan Travis because it's a known quantity to me, but I think Anthony Richardson, by the time we play that game in November, could be the better quarterback between the two, or at least the scarier one or the one that I would choose between the two. So we're going to learn about that if he ends up starting some games. I'm not going to do any further than that, primarily because I think he basically made made my point actually probably better than I would. The Emory Jones one, I don't think the kid's good. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's really good at all. Anthony Richardson, I don't know, for some reason didn't start till the end of the year. And then we saw that the second half against Florida where him and that dynamic running attack kind of took over the entire game. And then Jack Miller, Jack Miller is a transfer kid. I know nothing about other than his name is Jack Miller and played Ohio State. And that's not fair to JT to be no ring over that. But folks, for those who keep a score at home, I was three and six. Dave was, I think you had only two, one loss on there. So you were eight and one overall yeah. for all the picks. So with that being said, I mean, like, Basically, we're asking in this thing I said earlier that is JT a top five QB, not only in our conference, but also in our division. In my personal opinion, he's not. In Dave's opinion, he is. 
Yep. And you see Brandon Snow said the same thing yesterday where I think he was 41st in passer rating last year, 25th, in, I think, at QBR when you include the rushing. So it's going to be really fun to see how Jordan Travis and his team kind of develops over the year. And for those of you that need to develop your cars, head on over to rockauto.com. Folks, I've been saying this each and every single time as Rock Auto is one of our sponsors. My uncle, Dio Francisco, shout out Delray Beach, Florida, has been a mechanic for over 20 years, just as long as Rock Auto. And why choose to spend 30 50, even 100% on the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership, whether it be a fuel pump from a chain store, or maybe, you know, you get some seatbelts, or like myself, who spills his coffee every damn morning in his car for some damn stupid reason when he leaves Dunkin' Donuts, head on to rockout.com, where basically it is much, much cheaper. They are a family-run business, self-serving do yourself for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. And when you head over there, right locked on in the, their how did you hear about us section so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Uh, Dave, Davey, Davey, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Let me just have a moment of silence right now, real quick. Okay, we're gonna you Googleize, in the words of Derek Zoolander. I'm gonna hand the raids off to you for this one. Yeah, we're gonna just, now. I think is the time that we discuss the what oh, is the 2021 20, 2022 FSU basketball season. Kind of take us where you want to go, my guy. Where is there to go? Um, it's really disappointing that all year long I was really low, I think more so than most people on this team. I, we had a three and a week. We we came up, we came up with some big wins, some big close wins against a top team in Duke, against a rival in Miami, and then this happened. This week happened. Yikes. Um, Georgia Tech, we talked about it entering the game. That was one of the worst teams in the ACC. And we blew it. Then we pl- we, we, we entered a game that if we were going to make the tournament against Virginia, if we're going to make the tournament, that game against Virginia Tech was a must win. They were at the bottom of the ACC as well. They were one game over 500 entering our game. They hadn't beat FSU in Tallahassee since George H.W. Bush was president. And they beat us by more than a dozen. Yikes, Drake. There's there's so many things to talk about. The big elephant in the room to me is that you'll hear a lot of people make excuses and say, oh, like nobody ever shoots from three like that one kid did. And it's true. Like he got hot and that sucked for us. However, the number of times that we don't guard the perimeter that we get lazy on the outside and that out of 358 qualifying division one teams we rank 329th in three-point defense and our overall defensive rating has capsized from top 25 to now outside the top 65 i know we're missing some players drake but this team has gotten worse on defense as the season has gone on the offense really hasn't improved that all that much, much less nearly as much as it needed to. Shooting still isn't there. There's so many problems with this team. They would have to really close out the rest of the season almost flawlessly to make the tournament at this point, unless they win the ACC tournament. Yeah, and that really sucks because, like, I remember be, I think the first episode that we did, we beat the crap out of Penn, which felt awesome. But then again, it was Penn. And then we lost that Florida game, and it kind of was like a foreshadowing of the season to come, primarily that. Florida has that big man, Colin Cowleton, up in the middle. And whenever we see these bigger teams, we just kind of shrivel up, shrivel up, and just aren't able to respond. And then you pointed this out yesterday while watching the Virginia Tech game, where literally I think we were down by two, and then out of nowhere we were down by 16. Yeah. That it's not that we don't defend the three well. No, I mean, sorry. It's not that the kid like, was making every single shot. I mean, it was Hunter Couture and I think Padula is the other kid's name. They were... 75% from three yesterday. Sorry, 70% from three yesterday. Yeah. It's the entire, like, it's seemingly lack of effort to defend it. Like, so, get someone get in the kid's face with your yep. hand or something. It's just the perimeter defense is a joke. And, like, it seems to me that there's a lack of, now, I don't know if it's effort or just there's a lack of want to guard beyond the perimeter. And it's really just killing us. And we're a team that already shoots bad. If we get down in a hole like this, we can come back from that. And that's, Unfortunately, this is the makings of a really, really good NIT team. Yep, that's right. And again, 
that kid shot the lights out. They had two kids that shot the lights out. Um, yeah. But it was really disappointing to me to see, like, especially a lot of people on the FSU beat saying, like, oh, who shoots like that? No, that's that's a cop out because this team has struggled in three point defense all year. The effort has not been there on the outside. You, you see too many uncontested and open looks from three. And it's not the case where the scheme is designed to just give them those shots. That's not the case. I assure you, Leonard Hamilton is not telling the team to let them shoot open threes. The effort level is just not there on the outside. This is an extremely atypical Leonard Hamilton defensive effort. Typically, his teams are excellent on defense, and in some categories, they still are. But in the one that is currently most emphasized in the game of men's college basketball, three-point shooting, we are not able to defend it. We're one of the worst in the country at defending it. And I, I've, I've said it previously in the season if we don't start getting good at threes on offense and good at defending threes on defense, this team is going nowhere. And it looks like that's exactly where it's at, unfortunately. Yeah. Not only we can't block the three, we can't shoot the three. And then that, you know, Caleb Mills game is going to the basket. Right. And yeah. I mean, a caveat for yesterday for the Virginia tech game, as we're recording this now, it's Sunday that Caleb Mills, Raekwon Evans were out yeah. and Malik Osborne. We officially found out that he's not coming back for the rest of the year. The ankle injury probably is a lot more tender ligament related. So, I'm not going to lie to you. I hope he comes back. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back because his first few games before the NC State game where he suffered the injury, he was really damn good. But Caleb Mills' entire game is going to the basket. If you have no floor spacing when it comes to, you know, shooting a three, why would I go out guard three? I'm going to guard the middle or make your, your, the shot that you're your bread and butter. I'm going to make it harder for you, more difficult for you. So for me, this is a team that it sucks. It sucks because we were so excited heading the year to cover them. We yeah. really were. And FSU basketball has been on the rise for the past, what, it feels like five, six years now. Yep. And it's something that we get excited for every single week to talk about. And now it kind of sucks that we're back to where, where I was in school, where you were kind of in school, that our season is over in literally the middle of January, which sucks. But hopefully, you know, we'll be able to turn it around. We have 10 games left. Maybe yep. we can go off on a run. Maybe we won't. But if there's anyone that can do it, I think it's Coach Ham. Because I, in my personal opinion, the ACC right now as a whole is super, super weak when it comes to yep, us. That's right. UNC, when Wake Forest is one of your best teams in the, in the conference, that's not a good thing in my personal opinion. So we'll see. Yeah, this team, this team still has an opportunity. It, it, I mean, it can still close out the ACC schedule and head into the ACC tournament with an opportunity to make the NCAA tournament. It's not like we're precluded from making it at this point. However... Those losses now to South Carolina and Georgia Tech, and even to a lesser extent, the loss to Virginia Tech, are going to absolutely kill our resume come tournament time. This, look, the coaching staff is the same. The staff has proven it can get a lot out of a little, or not a little, but it can make the most out of its rosters. Um, the problem is that they're now going to be relying on freshmen. Jalen Worley was not ready to be an ACC starter, I don't think. And no. there he was against Virginia Tech. So you're going to see some, unfortunately, you're going to see growing pains later in the season. Typically, that's when Florida State's basketball team has kind of figured out its growing pains and gets hot at the right time. I don't know if it's going to happen this year. Uh, crazier things, certainly crazier things have happened than to think that another Leonard Hamilton team will make the NCAA tournament. But it's unfortunate. I know for a lot of you, basketball is a novelty that it's been good and you really you know, you love Florida State sports, but it's all about football to you. And that basketball happening to be good is like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I'll pay attention to that. That can be exciting. I, I know it sucks. It sucks that it's not the same team as it was last year, or the five years before it. But look, there's still an opportunity to be had here. I'm extremely disappointed. I don't like that I was right about, you know. Yes, you do. I, I really don't. I want this. I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm just, I'm, it I'm, sucks. I'm just it, giving it. I know. It, it sucks. But. Look, gonna need to get hot at the right time. That's that's all I can say. It's unfortunate, but yeah, hang in there. Leonard Hamilton can do it. He can, but folks, we are officially now on bubble watch. So not only are yeah. our games important, but a lot of the other teams right now that are in the force four out or force four in, they lost their games too. So hopefully we can yeah. make it sneak in there as a nine, maybe an eight seed. But folks, as always, thank you guys so much for the love and support for making for making locked on your first listen each and every single day. And we wouldn't be able to do this without each and every single one of you. Now, don't forget, please, five-star reviews, cinco-star reviews, either on our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast from. Don't forget to like this video at the bottom, follow the social media accounts, hit the subscribe banner at the top, 
and ding the little bell so you know when new content drops, you'll be the first to know. So all that being said, this was Drake. That was Dave. We'll see you all next time. I'll walk on Seminoles. Take care, everybody.